and welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Summer Cup. I hope you enjoyed your Update 10 kickoff. I know these teams uh, had a little bit different perspective Update 10. It was not so much, let's just see the new content, but let's get ready for the playoffs. We're here at the quarterfinals of the Summer Cup. We have 38th and 91st, the community hosts, uh, taking on 501st Estados, the Spaniards, along with Bastardos. And notice over to the other side of me here, we actually got a new uh, commentator, uh, Muck. What's going on, Muck? Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, rocking, rocking the beard game. Rocking the yeah, beard yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More just laziness from not, uh, you know, shave, <laughs> playing too much HLL. But yeah, uh, it's there. Gotcha. So, Muck, for those that don't know you, you want to go ahead and give just a brief little introduction? Uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, father to a murdered wife. Uh, father to a, no father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife. I will get my vengeance. No, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm Muck Snapper. I actually started uh, my clan, Gary's Only Fans. Which, you know the paid subscribership. You guys get it. Yeah. Um, yep. It, it yep. was it was originally supposed to. <laughs> it was originally Garrison's supposed to be hot. <laughs> Garrisons are so hot. Five dollars a month. So it was supposed to be a joke. It was like a meme thing. And then uh, you know COVID and two thousand hours in the game later, here I am. Yep. Stuff, stuff. And here and, and com competitive focus so uh mono's actually out and doing the right thing spend some time with his family and i wanted to get muck i wanted to get muck in here because he has a critical eye on competitive and obviously garrisons being uh, the leader of garrisons only fans but let's go ahead and introduce uh how we kind of got here um there is uh we as you remember with the summer cup we had 10 total teams. We went through a Swiss system every week. The uh, amount of points you got from capping, you got one point per cap. So maximum per battle was five. And we got to our top eight. Uh, sadly, PPK and War, 82nd AD uh, dropped out. We are into the final eight quarterfinals. It is a single elimination knockout round. And Ooh. I want to point this out. Yeah. Uh, Pi 104th, who now is changed over to Core, if I remember correctly, a name change. I think so, yeah, um, recently. They've been able to, uh, they, they had their way with BWR yesterday. There's no easy way to say that. Yeah, uh, saw that one. I saw that one. Um, 104 just continues to impress me. Uh, those guys are, they, they, they just know the roles. They know the roles. Indeed. They got the shots, and they, they utilize the artillery when it's available. Uh, uh, it, it, they're the team to beat right now, in my opinion. Yep. So they established yeah. that. That was match was yesterday. But today, I want to point this out. 38th, 91st, and 501st Bastardos. One cap difference through the entire Swiss kind of a placement match. Really expecting a good game here. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of look at this a little bit too, if I can flip over to the right one. So here is the full tournament bracket as you see it. Uh, what will be happening after this one? I believe we have Raptors Hive, uh, and then tomorrow, 160th SCB versus Phoenix Exodus. If I remember correctly, uh, check those out later streams. But the winner of this one and is going to be taking on that very stout Pi one of fourth team. Uh, so um, let me uh, let me touch this. Uh, Go ahead. So yeah, if if thirty eight ninety one, which I believe they, I watched your stream. They played. They were the ones that played one of four Pi. I believe on SME as allies. Okay. I I hope they had time to view that footage the way I got to, because uh, it's a wonderful stream. I I think that ninety eight. Or sorry, ninety one and thirty eight had a good team. I think they did the right things. I just think they need to play to one of four's aggressive wide map control strategy a little bit more, and they have a chance. I really do. And, and Pi one of fourth is a is a all around good team. But uh, I'll put out this one: the five hundred first Estados in the Gray, uh, the Greyhound Cup had a solid performance there. I want to believe they actually got fourth, if I remember correctly. And they've been paired up with the Bastardos. So they've been, this, this is an up and coming community that's putting in the grind, putting their time, getting that involvement, getting the participation. And the 91st being the hosts, um, you know, they had a rough start at the beginning of the placement matches. They have come on strong here later in. Uh, so this is going to be a good match. And we are on per perhaps one of the quintessential uh, competitive maps here St. Mm -hmm. Marie Iglesias. So. Uh, Five of Hurst and the Stars will be uh, coming as allies coming from the east side of the map. 38th and uh, Panzer will be coming from the west. Uh, I always ask this question, Muck, to guess which of these three middle po points, Hospice, the chapel itself, which is called St. Marie uh, Iglesias, uh, middle point, mm -hmm. or checkpoint, do you like to fight over the best? You gotta love that. You gotta love the church. Everybody loves the church. It's like chapel <laughs> on Utah. 
Um, you can't go wrong with it. The one I like seeing the least is Checkpoint. Really? Um, I, 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 I don't like Checkpoint. I actually Not a fan. like Checkpoint. So let's go ahead and talk I a little think. bit about St. Maria Glaze. I, as far as sure. the control, it does favor a little bit of the allies because of being able to get into that east side of the mm -hmm. church, obviously get into the strong point area. But right. really, you know, teams that set up for the Germans to get the map control, so much of this strong mm -hmm. point is actually on the kind of northeast corner that uh hold on i got a i got a i got a daughter here go ahead okay i'll be right out there all right daddy duty calls anyway <laughs> uh so you got the uh five first uh you know having to focus on the chapel get some of the top right corner but if the 91st and 38th smart they're going to be playing that map control and really trying to wrap around that southern point and yep. the key area is obviously the strong point right there in the middle. It's the C section really kind of getting in that uh, area um, to the south, which allows you to wrap around into that B column. Then yep. the other challenge is going to be where does that second point line up uh, after the chapel? Is it going to be into a Western approach? If so, you're really looking right in that main point to point fight going on. Is it going to be route to harass? If so, that's really a hard setup because you have to kind of block the point-to-point, -point, but really want to control that key uh, active sector down south. And Rue right. de Gambo, I, I, I think that's going to be interesting. I, I actually want to see hate, Checkpoint. Hate to see, hate to see. Uh, you want to see uh, Checkpoint as the middle, huh? I want to see Checkpoint as the middle, because I feel like Checkpoint, especially within this map, gets to be able to have a good balance of whose armor integrates best with <clears> infantry, <throat> Uh, you got a little bit of city fighting that happens up here on the north side. You have some open yeah. fighting wheat down here in the middle. And then you just have this like, you know, trench and road system. Uh, the way I look. Yeah, the way ahead. I look at it, the reason why I don't like checkpoint, the way I look at it is if you look at it holistically on the macro level, uh, what's what's the grid there in uh, the bottom, the bottom west checkpoint that is about, uh, uh, E8? E8, I should know that. Uh, E8 is is a, is a wide open field. It's a death trap, right? So the axis, especially when you have the, the checkpoint lineup, the axis can, like they basically just lose an entire sector at the um, you know at the beginning of the game. And having the wheat fields on the allied side is such a huge advantage. So like you have E, e and F7 are pretty fair, but taking a whole sector out of a team side is just what I hate to see. Yeah. And at the very least, when you have the strong point on the east side of Saint Mary East. Uh, their approach has all those buildings in the city, right? So they can wrap around, get south, they can get north. They can control the map, which gives them the ability to fight for that strong point. And as we know, fighting for the strong point in the very beginning of the game is a thing of the past. All the best teams, they're moving, they're moving, they're getting the map, right? Correct. If you lose an entire sector on Nexus side, not good. Well, so, remember, in, up, in Update 9, they did add a little bit more of that kind of building farm area down here to have yeah. a, little, a, a better presence which does have yeah. some great line of sights over to that area. Um, and you can throw your tanks down there too. So yeah, that. exactly. And I, I love seeing kind of that tank to tank battle. St. Marie yeah. Glaze inside the middle. It's pure city urban combat. Hospice gets a good amount of mix of it. But uh, I, I kind of talk a little bit about uh, this map. Let's actually kind of go over uh, as the teams are forming right now. Uh, my kind of keys to success for St. Marie Glaze, what I really want to uh, say, and I'm going to actually jump down to number two because we were just talking about it on Checkpoint, coordination between armor and infantry. Why this is a city map, armor does play a pretty heavy role on this map. Yep. Um, yep. And I was going to say with the changes, the armor changes, uh, I think this is actually, well, besides yesterday, was Hill 400. Uh, armor was not there. This will be the first com competitive uh, event where we see the new armor changes come into effect. It's going to be interesting to see whether they're going to go three man or two man. I don't think we're going to be seeing any one man tankings going forward in competitive unless it's really. Recon. Yeah, unless it's yeah. like uh, uh, just you have complete armor do not domination. Um, yeah. So that's going to be it. Uh, two or if we go back up to the first one, Muck. Uh, control the key buildings and line of sight movement. You want to talk a little bit about that? Because I know you've studied this map over yeah. and over and over again. Then this is exactly what I was going into about the storm and the strong point thing of the past, right? So if you have those buildings, let's say axis side, you have those, those lines of sight. If they get into the church, fine. That's the strong point. You have strong point area outside of the church, but you have to have those lines where you're covering open, uh, those, open, those open areas. 
So uh, MG placement, um, making sure you're getting on the south, watching them come in from the garrisons. Um, at, at, at worst, if you need to clear church, smoke it out, satchel it. But you have to be able to, yeah, you have to get the buildings. You have to get the lines of sight. I believe in today's meta, that is more important than just, just getting into the strong point. Because you get into the strong point, you're fine, but if you can't survive, that's it. Correct, yeah. correct. Yeah, so it's... Uh, and while the city is more open, definitely more open than the re current rework to uh, St. Marie Dumont City, um, there are some key avenues, uh, the main road, some back areas, where if you can funnel the enemy into just a couple corridors, it really limits their ability and allows you to wrap around, move to the next point, you know, oh, yeah. multiply, you know, uh, be a force multiplier, things of that nature. Um, finally, number three, and I think this one hits uh, home on a lot of maps, but especially on this one, um, smart garrison placement, both at the beginning yes. and then at the and then during the middle. So let's go back up to chapel and I want to go ahead and uh, switch back to stretch catch for this one to kind of do a an example here. So if you are we'll go to the clean one the if you're coming up and you do like from the americans you do the token we put a garrison right near the edge hey we got the supply truck down the middle and we're going in mm -hmm. there you're actually going to be locking a 200 uh, meter point from right, the I was, chapel i was going to speak on that as well yep exactly uh yeah. we'll, go, we'll go ahead and speak a little bit more to it Nuck. yeah so so here's what i think so by watching the streams and, and watching the competitive play here's what i think is going on or what needs to go on. so if if you're going to do a line garrison like in a point where you have the strong point closer to your side you have a huge advantage i think the line garrison is fine but your team needs to have the ability and the the like the strategy to know that it needs to go down to have the commander or whoever ready so a lot of times like in pubs i'll put the garrison 200 meters away from the chapel now if they put a chapel garrison down i'm going to be a little worry right yeah well, I, I don't i don't think a garrison goes inside the, the actual church i don't think that should ever happen it's obvious it, it's always getting locked it's getting satcheled but yeah to your point the the placement i think the competitive teams are like look get the garrison on the line get the strong point presence get the map control and if we have to move the garrison after cap fine we'll do that and i think that's well and, and your wish was granted as a chapel is let's the go. midpoint now, here's a, another thing that's uh, new with the uh, update 10 is the longer warm up period. So I want to go ahead and point this out. And if it, go ahead and pull up your map also here where we check this out is oh, now no. there is uh, transport trucks uh, at each one of the headquarters spawns here that allows the uh, really kind of that whole meta of get to a garrison, open it up. Um, go ahead and pull up your map also for me there, Muck. Uh, that whole like rush, let's build a garrison uh, up there and then everybody spawned. Now there's multiple areas that they can come in as. Um, also, this and we actually see this happening right now on the 38th side is we starting to see some of these resource nodes being built. Smart use. They could be like, three nodes down here on the south nodes now in the headquarters sector, three nodes being built in the middle. Uh, so the, nothing on north, but headquarters sector now does count. In fact, anywhere that you place friendly nodes on the map now does count. For the 501st Bastardos, are we seeing some nodes getting down uh, on their side oh, yeah. also? Yeah, absolutely. They're, they did they during the strategy that you know we're all looking to implement. They know that they have a team going three up top, three middle, three down south. That's the way to go. Get them done. Get them out of there, and boy, get you, get to your uh, position. Perfect. They're doing it. Yeah. So we're we're right now at a minute. Let's go ahead and do a quick overview. So uh, actually, interesting enough, I, I like this layout. We're now at uh, f coming from the 38th and Panzers, Valville down to Rue, up to St. Mary Glees, and oh my gosh, we're right to Cemetery. Depending how this fight goes, I love this path going from St. Mary Glees to Cemetery. Uh, yeah. There's only let's go ahead and fly this in right now. Just make sure we get the right distance. Uh, only 265 meters from center of strong point to center of strong point on that. That is tight. Uh, that, is that, me tight, yeah. that means that your attackers need to be able to hold that control as much as possible from the 503rd and Bastardos. And then yeah. finally, get back. Uh, we're going back down to uh, Rousseau, Rousseau de Fermer. I'm not going to pronounce that too much. Um, mm -hmm. 
But uh, we are just about to kick this off. 15 seconds, both maps up to see how this is starting yeah. out. And on and that note, yeah, so so when we're talking about the, the St. Mary Cemetery lineup and the St. Mary on the axis, I don't I don't want to see Rue in this lineup. But um, the, the key control here is if you're allies and you're struggling for the 3-2, better, better, better have the south. Correct. Better have the south or, or the cemetery is absolutely gone. And when I say south, I mean like F7. Is these uh, the, the best teams are going to be setting up. They're going to be ready. They're going to have recon vehicles, uh, uh, recon uh, squad leader spotters down there. And for Rue, um, you kind of have to go E line, right? You have to hit that E line south as well. And then uh, it's a lot harder for them, I think, to to push basically from the north. There's a lot of open field there. There's open field in the east, but they have the cities to like set up their base of operations on the south of, south of SME. If you're not controlling that map, you're in trouble. Rue's tough. Correct. And just looking at the top here, right, we got this calculating over. Uh, keep that map up for me one more time. Uh, gotcha. All nodes minus one ammunition are set up for 38th and 91st. I'm looking at our count for uh, resource generation. How does the 501st and Bastardos look for their Everything up plus 10. Beautiful. Plus, they're plus 60 on everything. That's what you plus want to 60. see. Get it done. So Perfect. they did go with the frontline garrison. Uh, they, went, they went straight into G5. I think that they know that either A, they're not going to build the church garrison, which is great. You don't want to see that. Or, uh, you know, B, they're going to remove it if they need to. So this is good. Yep. So uh, 501st, as expected with the Allies spawn, is coming in, uh, going straight into that strong point. Uh, meanwhile, yeah. best, uh, the 38th and 91st uh, taking that southern approach. This is the key thing I want to see how quickly, and we actually see them coming right now on the right side of the screen, how quickly does 501st uh, control that southern side to meet this engagement? not putting all right. the eggs in the basket right into the chapel and so far it looks like they're playing well well yeah well i, I gotta be honest i would have liked to seen a little bit more south presence they are completely focused on getting the first cap and if that's the case that's fine if they want to get the three two advantage but they need to have flops go south here well um, we, got, we do got about two squads of bastardos and final first going down we actually see mosca right there in the center screen good friend mosca who just recently uh, helped put out a new player guide Check it out. Shameless plug. Couple members from each side go down here on the south. Mosca coming down on the uh, west side. Nothing affecting uh, Chapel. I do see some defend markers in F6. That's what I like to see. Yep, they're starting to spread out now. This is really good. At the very least, they, they didn't come wide, which I would have liked to seen maybe like 7, 8 line. Uh, but they're at the very least, they're coming down south and they're, they're spreading out before yep. they uh, take the cap. This is good. And uh, unopposed cap as that straight two minutes is going through right now. Five of us and Bastaros will be taking the, uh, barring a miracle here, will be taking the opening. 38th and 91st actually getting a little bit more spread out on the north side. We'll go ahead and pan some, out from some, here. Got some engagements over here. Switch over to me if you got me. Uh, Bastaros engaging with uh, 38 in the south here. Whoa, who we got? We got Pepe Stone. Oh, here comes Dox. Oh, Dox takes him out. Dox has got a 1-6 here. Let's see what he's got. I don't want to add in person. I'm going to go over here. Okay. All right. Let's see what Dox has against six guys. Rico coming up. Dox in the house. Playing it smart. And this is what I mean about the south. See, they're, they're completely taking over the south here. Dox is kind of all alone. He doesn't have any squad leaders, any presence on the south to flank this flank or to flank this, this sweep, rather, mm -hmm. right? Yep, and, and, and uh, I, I would have actually, liked to see that. Let's go ahead and pull up the side by side because now the 501st and Bastardos are actually getting some cap pressure on Gambo. Exactly. And now that, that's that, the thing. It just goes, yeah, it goes quick. It goes yep, quick. and now that's going to be shut down as the Smartly 38th and 91st does have uh, two garrisons up. They're going to be able to react to that quick, uh, quick, you know, kind of cap. But let's look a little bit at the garrison situation now as the midpoint's taken. For uh, 38th and 91st, they got three wide frontline garrisons, a back one down there on Rue, uh, four total garrisons up. How are, how's our garrisons looking uh, for the 501st? So I think they played it smart. There is a G5 garrison that just went uh, locked. They got it up. They got the north garrison up. I like this spread, but uh, I hope that uh, George old Mike Bike over here is planning to build a garrison. Um, you really want to see a garrison in F6 or at least F7, but they are dropping Correct. supplies. So it looks like they're trying to get that, that South control. You've got to have it. So I think gotcha. they're working on it. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, G5 garrison went down. Perfect. Who that is. Ooh. 
so uh, remember with the new update 10, there's no heavy tanks for the German at the start. They're on a five minute cooldown. So now is about the time when that tank spawn. You're looking for those guys to come up. We're going to start to probably see some tank engagements as the uh, infantry makes their presence known. Uh, Bastardo's looking good here on the south side. Um, getting some pressure happening. Also, let's go ahead and scroll up here a little bit to the north. Uh, the north side, they're actually clearing out and meeting the challenge of the 38th and 91st. So, I mean, not an active sector on defense, but responding to 91st placement. Yeah, just on the overhead here, um, the uh, 501st of Bastardos have map control on SME. Dog Squad is making the F7 garrison, which is very, very crucial. And they actually left space to make one in F6, it looks like, from the 200 meter. So, I'm, I'm okay with this. Yep. We actually see a little bit now. Uh, so, yeah, actually, 91st kind of get opening up the middle, uh, a wide picket line that uh, 5 versus and Bastardos are responding well to. It's going to be the question right now, who gets on a, who gets a hot hand, is able to break through, uh, clear out some of these lines. We're just about 10 minutes in the game, and I'm looking. I'm looking for those key tank battles right now. Yeah, I'm not seeing those yet, but the uh, the 91st and uh, 38, they're starting to chip away at the south. This is huge. They have mm -hmm. a big line on the south, and all they have to do is really, like, there's no there's no garrisons. There's just an OP here. Uh, so if they chip away at Nagat, they could have crucial mapping. And love we had, it. <laughs> love, the, love the competitive HOL. And, and this is really one thing, like, because while we're looking here on the south, yes, the uh, 38th and 91st is making a more and more kind of uh, clawing down the south. Look on the right hand side of the screen here. You actually see Bastardos, uh, just about a little two squads, now actually clearing out the um, St. Marie to Western approach route uh, just to clear, you know, make sure that there's nothing I, yeah. kind of sneaking in. I like mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. This is. I think that's huge. Yeah. So yeah. I think that the important thing about getting the cap right, the immediate, the immediate thing is get off the strong point. Where are they Correct. coming from? Meet them there. You stay in the strong point, they're coming to you. I think that's that's a little bit no, more known in the meta. What I don't think, what I think people, teams are finally shaping up to is controlling the map before the cap happens. And that's where you see like teams like 104, WTH, they're doing that stuff. And uh, th while 501st and Bastardos, they eventually got there, I think that it's crucial to the timing on that. It needs to happen. But this Correct. is good. They're looking and, good. And really kind of what you're saying, I'm going to go back to the John Madden you're trying to set up essentially this kind of ring defense here where you have your first ring, your outer ring, maybe you get a little bit more of this, control something of that nature, and then finally right. you want to get this kind of complete area. Well, that was a little wide. Uh, but uh, happening... While we're, on, yeah, while we're on John Madden, don't forget the team with the most strong points in the game wins. So uh, <laughs> we got to look forward to that. <laughs> yeah. So we actually see a little bit of a, a crease starting form here in the uh, Bastardos defense as a squad leader from 38th and 91st yep. has made his way through. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Uh, that's Doomhammer making... Uh, are you, what sector are you in right now? Doomhammer? Yeah, what sector are you in? Uh, that, uh, just to the southwest of the chapel as a bombing run goes down on the oh, chapel. Oh, yeah, this is... So, see, this is... this. They're starting to chip away at them now. Yep. They no do have a lot... Go ahead. No cap pressure yet as the squad for uh, Five of Us Bastaros is still using that time stream multiplier, but this is a little bit run. dangerous. A little bit dangerous as the Bastardos are, uh, and Five of Us are committing heavily to that north. And that southern so, side has started yep, to crumble. Yep. So flip to mine if you can. All right. So this is exactly what I was talking about earlier when I said they were chipping away at the south, right? They didn't. They didn't build the garrison. They didn't focus hard on the south. And now you see all this red. That's your team. Ninety uh, first and thirty eight are really starting to control the south. That's not good for five zero first. They need to counteract it. These guys here are on my screen. They need to be pushing north. They need to pinch these guys in. They have to pinch them. They have to sweep the spawn points. This has to happen. Correct, and we're getting a, we're getting a little bit of lag on your screen, which we'll try to clear it up here in a little bit. Uh, but uh, definitely that south side being issued now. But check this out now uh, for the final first by Stardos. Now they've actually the o, using OP spawn responded well, and now they have this 38th, 91st uh, uh, assault team completely encircled. The question is, can uh, you know now for <laughs> for 38th you can now shoot in any direction and not miss? 
But uh, who's not missing is the five person Bastardos. Uh, oh, yeah, one over here. Starting to clean that up. Now we got people coming down uh, out of the chapel. Also, All coming right. north from the uh, hospice, or sorry, from the checkpoint area. Yeah, 501st and Bastardos cleaned this up nicely. There's um, uh, Todd, Todd, Isher, Todd Isher's bold. Todd Isher's bold. He, uh, he's holding it down, but uh, I don't think it's going to last much longer. Todd Isher's bold. Yeah, Todd, Todd Isher's Todd bold. No, he's dead. All right, dead, moving all right. on. We don't need to try that anymore. <laughs> See you guys, it's not much me. Hey, do me a favor. Go ahead and uh, check over at Rue. See if there's any uh, attack pressures. I'm going to keep an eye as the bus yeah, starts clear this out. We do have a garrison in C8. I'm I'm hoping they're going to spawn in that. They have complete control of same here right now. They need to get pressure on them. It's a tough point. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the map here. I'll get the garrison. Plus, there we go. So see my map here. Uh, garrison C8, and it's completely... Um... This is surprising to me. I, I feel like 30, 90, 91st, 38, they, they need to have that flank from B. Uh, they need to have periphery locking the garrison down at all times. Yeah. Well, I got my, yeah. I got the map up also here. Let's keep it side by side up. We, uh, interesting enough, uh, 38th and 91st and still just now, just now got their fifth garrison up uh, behind mm -hmm. Rue, but they were essentially running on that four garrison front for the longest time. They did have, we just did uh, check this now, they actually had a red zone garrison back up yeah. to the northeast of and, and uh, St. Marie. And if we look at F8, I'm not sure if they're having trouble getting there, but the recon vehicle made it to Rue. That F8, gear, wait, no, that's, uh, sorry, that's on my team. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that they should be, so there should be a periphery on the C line here. I would like to see, um, I would like to see 38 and 91st trying to make it to F8 right now. There's a wheat field. You can set up an operation there. It's far, mm -hmm. but it's effective. Got to control well, the map need to pinch the south they're pinching you in like they did like they cleaned them up then you got to go further out you got to pinch them out you got to get the garrisons and you got you got to pinch them you got to squeeze them right that that anaconda bow constrictor analogy we always use you got to do it so i'm, I'm hoping that who, who, uh, who's, the, who's the we is the we you or is the we me us I, I think i think we've all used the snake analogy <laughs> <at one point. laughs> well and I, I i we got the maps up here too um remember that before in prior to the tournament that every point that you took counted to help your seeding to get in this tournament. Now it's a straight win. You win 3-2, you're moving on. Um, so for yeah. the Bastardos, uh, now we actually so we talk about this. We now see the 6th uh, garrison go up for the 38th and 91st. So finally able to get some uh, better traction there as their attack kind of stalled. But for the 501st and Bastardos, I would caution them to just kind of be happy with where they're at right now because just staying down there kind of playing passively eventually the team will start to move around uh but as i say that 38th and 91st was able to lose the red zone garrison not a lot of attack pressure happening in the cap point but you'd see all those yeah. squad leaders on the peripherals of uh saint marie glaze and you do see that yeah you see the flop squads going to c section which i like to see um, I, I, I'm shocked that 90, uh, 91 doesn't have a little bit more of a South presence for their defense. You got to know that they're trying to go there and you've got to be trying to push East. You can't remember what I said in the beginning of the stream. Uh, if you're on Rue and, and it goes three, two or two, three against you, you've got to be in the East, right? East of Rue. And this Correct. is exactly what I'm talking about because now they're setting up and they have no South presence. Got to have it, but it's okay. Uh, yeah. I don't want to beat that horse here, but, uh, let's just see how it pans out. Well, and here's here's we're looking directly at the uh, main route road to coming out of uh, the center of the town, looking at Rue over there on the west side or left side of your screen. This is a good opportunity, good attack uh, angle. If uh, this squad for the um, let's see, we got Kilroy with his AT having on there. It looks like uh, Mike Bike leading his squad down this road. If he's able to connect with the other squad down there, putting harassment on Rue. It's going to be valuable, but this is a. I think where you're saying you want you want now to see the five first and best baby. Stardos, you know, help five first and best Stardos get that garrison on the on their uh, westernmost front line to really establish that point. Yeah, but uh, well, I, I mean, on on the contrary though, that's exactly why uh, 38 and 91st uh, should be E and F uh, to one ensure that doesn't happen to 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 maintain that point. And they do have a tank out here. I don't think this tank should be alone. I don't know if it is. No, it's not. Okay, it's got some. You got a panther and a tiger coming up here. 
Oh and, yeah, Let, let's go. Let's get in the east. Here. Check this. Check this out now. Five hundred first and Bastardo is actually starting to put some. Oh, oh yeah. Sir We're takes there, down baby. Rico. Blues does he? He knows it's coming from behind. He's gonna get down that Another shot. Slur. Yep. Blue misses on the first. Connects on the se second. Avenges Rico. Uh, and the strong point actually for Rue is 100% in control of the Bastardos. And as I'm saying yeah. that, we get a little flicker of red that Ooh. just winds up happening. Those times three yeah, multipliers these... making their presence count up. Oh, and the, what just shut that down? Check this out. It, Commander, Commander of 501st in between a Panther and a Tiger right now. Hiding in a bush. You love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally stuck between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> Oh, that's great. And I, I, I love seeing the armor work together uh, on that one, too. Going back to the point over here on Rue. There is... you go. See, now, this is good, though, for nine. So they, they, they were, they got to it eventually, but they're there. This is what we need to see. So they're on the south. They're doing the periphery sweeps, and Bastardos, while they are in the strong point, shouldn't be too hard of a defense. Correct. Just coming down to the southwest now with the camera. Cat progress now has begun again, and smartly, Blue is a squad leader, really just getting himself in the right positions. Let's see if he's able to sniff out the spawn. He does. You see it right there in the bottom left of your screen. He takes down that garrison in the wheat field, and his guys That's are holding space, yep. their own. Holding their own That's in the space. point. One does Check go down. Yeah, one does go down, uh, which... Uh, Stalls the cap. You see up on the top side of the screen, though. You want to see the rest of those Bastardos and 91st uh, starting to connect, get into the active sector. Nothing happened down, down there for Blue, but Blue really doing a very good job. Squad yeah, leader staying up, focusing on Tanks coming back Both. for defense. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I think 91st and 38 are back in control here. Uh, like I said, as soon as they went south and cleared that spawn, that was... Um, that, that periphery, you got to have that set up. Ooh, here we go. Right here. Get on me. Get on me. Riddick. They popped out. They're trying to, it, two shots of the day. Go. Got him. Tiger down. Riddick Tiger goes down. S, or Riddick's 22. Nails him. Tiger goes down along with the rest of the infantry. And just that, uh, point right there, uh, is able to take down. Good job on Riddick. Takes down enough of uh, the 38th and 91st that now we have cap progress starting. We're just at 20 minutes in, over 20 minutes into the game. And yeah, that these, tiger was huge. Yeah, these guys really being really? a force multiplier. Um, clearly being outnumbered by the defense, but holding tight. Let's see if uh, this is the end of Yosan. Yeah, they got bubble butts, as I like oh. to call it. So they still uh -oh. got guys pushing in. Yeah, uh, it's it's about to happen. Did you I'm show me the sure. garrisons on your screen? No, I am not moving away. There is a satchel. <laughs> There's a satchel oh, on the outside no. of the building here. Yosan doesn't know it's coming. It's clicking down. Yosan, it's going to hurt, buddy. Oh, no. It's going to hurt. Oh, man, it's happening. It's going to happen. Yosan oh. goes down. Just, he, he got one, but that might be oh, critical. Actually, Rico, yeah, lucky, lucky son of a bitch was just outside of it. All he has to do is bandage. And so why that satchel sh would have cleared everybody if Rico wasn't there. Rico comes down and takes down Combat Wombat. Combat's confused as fuck right now. He goes, how the hell did Rico save that? And always a Rico. Always a Rico. Always a Rico. Something about the name Rico in this game. Something about Rico's. <laughs> and... <laughs> Once again, more and more. Now we're panning out here. We notice coming from Chapel. Here comes the rest of the 501st and Bastardos. Yeah, Rue is a little too late here. Take, yep, Rue uh, de Gambo is all but taken. And wow, really, really just great, great so, play there. Yeah, this is good. So this is, uh, let me touch on this. Two things I will say. Um, one, on that C C6 airhead that was beautifully placed. They got spawns on it. Um, I think a garrison goes down on that immediately. I think you have the team that's ready for the north sweep. And th this is just micro details that I notice. Um, you gotta get the garrison down there, lift one if you have to, get the north controlled for their flip back. And then Check. with the garrison C8, uh, you, gotta, you gotta hold uh, the B line. Um, Check this, they Check this. Valville, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Just, Valville just started triggering. This is what Keep. I'm talking about. This is where they should be. So they're already in position to draw the team back and hold the fourth point. This is great. Yep. 
It's just a recon, so it's gonna it's gonna be enough, but it's gonna it's gonna force the thirty eighth and ninety first to respect the recon play. Right. Um, let's go ahead and pull up our side by side on the maps here. See how the uh, garrison situation is looking. Yep. So now the CA garrison's nice and clear. Um, yep. I, I hope to see some guys spawning on that and controlling B eight B seven. I think the the best teams right now they know like don't even let them set up. Control A B seven and eight and and win this game. I mean. There's just not a lot they can do. You shut down that HQ. Any cap pressure on Volleville means they can't spawn middle HQ. You're done. Yeah, and I, so, I, will, uh, give, I will give credit 38th, 91st. Uh, not that you uh, want to take lessons learned down when you're 1-4, but you notice they actually built a second garrison right next to their headquarters spawn. Oh, yeah. Just in, case, yeah. just in case Volleville starts to get capped, they will still be able to spawn back there and run in. Here's I think that's first. smart. Commanders dropping supplies, but they can now get down a second garrison the natural way with the support player. Here's the question as the transition with so much territory between or distance between St. Mary Glace and Rude Gambo. Um, five of gift granted five of first of best artists. They have moved up their defense and they are strongly in control of that strong point right now. Yeah, good very good shift, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. also uh shout out Real quick shout out to my golf boys. Um, Sneaky, since I'm doing this, I need you to make that uh, SMDM uh, strat if you're watching this, which I know you are. So get that on my desk by uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is on a delay here. Yeah, he'll, he'll see it. <laughs> okay, okay, I gotcha. So uh, let's watch the life. And we've watched a little bit of the life. Let's see if uh, the death of the beard, the, 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 yeah, we're going to go with the beard. It's got a three beard, in it. Death of the beard. The death of the beard. Yeah, it's, it's got it's got a three in there. That's supposed to look like a B, right? Combat Wombat. Love that name. Trying to fill fill out the building here. I gotta check it. Can you pull up your map for me? I gotta see where uh Combat knows he's up there. Beard's hearing it out. This is those. Oh moments. check this out. Check this out. We have a uh a Panther, a Lukes, and a lot of 3891 on the northwest of the point. Um, I think this is this is pretty much the. I, I mean, you, look at look at C8. That that's an opening, right? I, I don't know. There's nobody guarding that. I hope. Can you pull up your map for me? Yeah, yeah. So we got we got 38th okay, yeah. doing a, a focused push right from Volville area down to Rue. Two armors, multiple squads coming in. Yeah, and, this is good. Yeah, no, this is this is exactly what you want to kind of see for the counterattack. Look at the one it. four. For the one four, you got light infantry on the south setting up, and the focused push from the northwest. That is, that's textbook. Ooh. Because you you can't have a huge spawn from the south, or they're just going to set up there and block that off. You creep them in, right? And I think I think five zero first is getting smart to it now. Uh, Dog squad Blescu is actually moving towards the southwest, uh, and that's that's a good play there. Yeah, we this is check good. I like this. Checking it now from the 38th perspective. You see that crew is out of the armor, uh, repairing that tank. One change for update 10 is now crewman repairs of tanks are at an increased rate. Look at so, Dragoon here. I don't want to have me curse him, but he's got to fight. Flip it over. He's got a Panther, a Lux. He's, let's see if he gets a crewman here. Okay, let's see if he gets a crewman here. Down goes the crewman. See ya. He's gonna come back with the he AT. Does, he, he, he does. Oh, he gets uh, dropped. By, there he is again. Todd Escher's bold. Todd Escher's bold. Todd Panther takes good. a shot. Oh, here we go. 76 on point side shot. Panther going down. Panther's down. Done. Good positioning by the 76. Yep. Plugging that hole that was right in there. The Luke's is still. Uh, <laughs> okay. Luke's <laughs> is still there. Uh, <laughs> Some the 38th push is now has been fragmented. Most successful push is coming from the uh, wheat field as expected. Uh, yep. Z bowl down there with Arch coming over. The point guy. Oh, he just lost his name, but his lights went out. So as, now you see Dog Squad. Now you see Dog Squad inside of B8. You've got to be there. I think that's a brilliant play. And uh, you, you just shut it down. Shut down. Oh, you got wiped though. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it's, it's funny okay. how the players do not listen to us at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was there. He had the right idea, but something took him out. 
So I, right now. I like that coordinated push. It definitely, uh, they didn't freak out about Volville uh, with the early cap. We're approaching right around the 30 minutes marks in this game. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of this moment to look at the structure of these teams here. Um, how, how they're stacking it up. So we see two man tank crew right now from the uh, Axis side and with along with a three man. I'm assuming that two man and another three man. I'm assuming that two man's probably uh, the Luke's uh, looking right. for the Bastardos. We see interesting. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling one two man crew, two two man crew, only two two man crews for the Bastardos. You also have it's Mike squad on the flop. Brilliant player, that guy. Yeah. And I want to. Let's point this out too. Uh, Axis 50 players, 504 Bastardos 47. So right now they're playing three men down and they have the lead. Um, well, one reason why we're delayed, the Bastardos were looking with the 501 first looking to get up to 50. I don't know if they, I, I gotta check back on this. I don't know if they went in and had a full strength on this, but right now they are playing uh, three less. Looking at the infantry setup, we see a four man squad, a three man squad, a five man squad, a four. So a uh, little bit more uh, smaller squads coming from the 38th and the 91st. Meanwhile, 501st got a full six man. A oh, five look at this. Man. Lost Boy has taken the garrison down on C8. They also have a squad leader and supplies available. This is good. This is good. So C8 might be opened up. Uh, they might be able to start pouring guys into this. Um, and that, that's see. the uh, uh, who's pouring in there. Yeah, so you have... Um, on, on your side, you have in B8, they're pushing up. They took down the garrison in C8 for Bastardos. All you have is a couple stragglers on the south for 501st and... Or sorry, yeah, 501st and Bastardos, they have a couple stragglers. But they are opening up this sector. This is huge. Gotcha. So continue. Take a look at my there. screen real quick. Um, we're already doing it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> sorry, I, don't, I can't see what you're doing. Hold on. <laughs> there we go, yeah. Yeah, so look, they're taking control of the south sector. This is good. If they could take that barn, this is a, this is a start for the comeback. There's an hour left. Yeah, well, and so. actually, what, what I was looking at that, too, uh, they're getting some pressure on the north side, too. Uh, we'll flip over to this one, get a little bit sand. So uh, what Buck was looking at, that southern barn down there, uh, one pressure going on there. I also want to highlight on the uh, north side here. Do, 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 do. Can, you, Let's go. can you tell me if uh, they built a garrison in B8? Hold on one second. So uh, for our blue players, uh, 38, you got one push coming down here from the south side. You got a solid push coming down this road. Wheat field as always. And then now look at this. They actually wound up coming down, clearing out this like that. territory, and now starting to work their way behind. Um, if any of these guys, now they did lose their armor support. If any of these guys are able to open up one of these creases and really get into the strong point, it's going to allow the rest of the people to uh, start working their way in. Right now, 38th yeah. and 91st looking to uh, looking good for uh, a yeah. re-attack here. Let's go ahead and pull up the side-by-side -side maps. Let's do that. All right. Okay, so they do have the garrison B8. Smart placement. They didn't put it close to the line. Look at look at uh, 38th and 91st. That's exactly what I was saying. That northwest push that drew so much attention opened up the south sector. They inch by inch cleaned them out. And now they're starting to control the south, and they're actually starting yeah. to cap. Yeah, starting to get a cap ah. progress. You see all that, all that map control, active sector. Bastardo still with uh, one strong point in the circle, which we do get a recent spawn wave that comes in using that time stream multiplier. While we we're just talking about that, actually, Volville flash just briefly, but uh, the uh, the boa constrictor is that was that was that the specific snake? Yeah. Thing you're gonna look at? <laughs> yeah. The boa yes, constrictor is starting to squeeze them and the yeah. garrison is hot c8 come down look at this look at this well check 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 wait wait before we look at that cat progress now is starting on valville small deep uh, attack force and this is what this is the same thing we saw from the 501st and uh Basardos. a small attack yeah. force being force multipliers now one squad is it blue tell me it's blue no fortis leader now in there as the main cap is now flying over 20%. Oh, go ahead, go ahead and keep over at, uh, at Rue. Okay, they, did take, they did take down the garrison south of Rue, by the way. So they have the squeeze. They just need that defense to get... Uh... Yep. There you go. There's the contest. And defense spawns so far as more people came in there. Combat Wombat there going against Justin. Uh, along with Justin, trying to find Fortis. 
Looks like we do see a little OP poof of smoke there for Fortis. So this attack is going to stall. Fortis is not going to go out without a fight as he takes down Rex. He wrecked Rex. They do have okay. an airhead, by the way, A7. Uh, once again, you, you want to see those garrisons going down immediately on those airheads. I think that's the play. Um, I think, some, you know, you see an airhead, your team should be support, support, double drop. Get yep. it in there. So um, I think you have 100 meters clearance on that, too. So, so we got uh, right now, actually, check this. All of Fortis's boys starting to come back in along with uh, Numb. Second squad coming in, takes out Combat Wombat. Cat Prog is just it. like that. Yep. Three guys look to support Fortis, take down two. They get the uh, multiplier going their way. R4P, up to R4P, let's see what he's got. They're squeezing him out though. You have uh, Just Robin, Just Robin. Um, got Panther support in the point. They're still taking, they're still taking the cap. Yeah. These guys need to get in the strong point. I don't think they're aware that they have the clearance, and that's okay, because, you know, we have the over. And now we're right, into a cap race. Go ahead and uh, flip, flip back over for uh, Rue, because we're, we're in a straight cap race right now. Here we go. Send it to Rue, send it to Rue. All right, so check my map, or check my screen here. We're right there. Uh, you got the, yeah, so you have the barn control there. Start, uh, five oh versus Wise. Down goes Mr. Hold on. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, th so that guy was trying to hold the south. Now they have the strong point. S they're starting to control it. And 501st of Bastardos is actually kind of stuck in the open here. So as long as uh, they can pick their shots, they have a good chance here. And uh, 501st, I just checked one more time. 501st of Bastardos still down three players. So it's a 47 on 50. And impressive. Impressive. Yeah. This is impressive work. I I've seen Bastardos play... I watched a couple months ago. I think they've come a long way. The alliance with 501st has done them well. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're starting to make the right plays here. And oh, look at this. Checking out right now. Who's our AT player? See if we can get him in range. Actually gets one right up the Panther. Rear side. Both points Back. actually. That's a Riddick. Both points go contesting. And both points actually starting to flash. This is fun. Straight up cap race. Right here past the 30 minute mark. I think ninety. I think uh, ninety-one and thirty-eight should should just completely hold this cap. It's their best bet, and I think uh, they they just got to get that deep that strong point. And this just is, like uh, that, attack has stalled uh, for 30, 38th and ninety-first. But five hundred first continue to go there. They're big. Have uh, moved up the cap re uh, cap lead. Yeah, when I look at my map, though, that's the thing. The map looks really good for five hundred first, but when I look at the the actual overhead view, it looks like it looks keep like 91st hey, has a lot keep, going on. Keep your map up for me. Keep your map up for me there. There you so go. There you go. So, and this, this is the difference right now for the 501st and Bastaros. You see they still have those OPs and garrisons behind, and they which is allow, yeah. allowing them to focus on the strong point and use every bit of that. Flipping back over to the uh, cap, the victory condition over here at Volville is 50% of the way right now for 501st and Bastaros. So now's but, the time to flip back. Now's the time to flip back for, uh, for yep. 91st. Yeah. And, it, and it's the same thing we saw on the, the second point. A small squad working the way, getting through there, and now we're at 75% for I call it dip, by Stardos. I call it dipping the toes in, right? Just, just, just the tip? Dip the toes in, just the tip. See how the water feels, and you tell your boys, come on, cannonball, let's go. Yeah. And that's what and they're this doing, is, yeah, it's wonderful. I'm looking at this now, we're starting to see some support coming from the south. Checking the cap progress. Still looks like it's going to 501st and Bastardos. We're less than 20 seconds for the 501st and Bastardos to move on to the semifinals. Are they going to be able to it. do it? Go ahead and flip to me. Let's see the end of this action right here. Conrad, will you finish it off? That's and it. That's the 501st and Bastardos. Game. Wow. Wow. I like it. I like it. And as wow. we always do, we always give accommodations to the commander. Uh, commander yeah. for this game was 91st was uh, Sebo and 501st uh, Gorth, 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 Oth, whatever. Uh, Gator Art. Boy. Gate, Gate, yeah, whatever. Art, uh, Art. <laughs> Garter H. Garter, Garter H. Preparation H. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Look at the build score. Just, uh, yeah, 2700 support score on there. Um, one yeah. thing that we noticed on this uh, resources really never came into play. 
Um, yep. Really interesting. Not we really only saw kind of one key, uh, at least what we were able to observe. One key armor engagement. Let's see what this flips over. We'll see uh, who we got from the top side. Looks like uh, armor. And look at actually a um, decent amount of uh, smaller squads now from that uh, area. Looked like Gnome Birds, Conrad, Score, uh, Victor saw them on the last point. Um, and for the 91st, they're starting to get out of here. Uh, once again, once again uh, well, the 501st, Mike Squad sure um yeah take a look out on the screen my squad allies go ahead no you, it's all you oh sure. okay yeah. yes well, first, it, my... people are people are dropping out now we're we're, we're done we're done with the scoreboard just, just show <laughs> it real quick we're done nice we're squad. done we're done <laughs> uh so uh back back to us um a good good match uh, right around 35 minutes as the uh, uh, 501st and Bastardos. You talked about how you've seen him before. That did not look like the same 501st and Bastardos that we saw not in the Greyhound Cup. Um, not at all. I, I think maybe the Bastardos learned something from the 501st. Both together have gotten more experience. Um, yeah. I, I was going to say there's a lot of things I liked about that battle for them. Um, yep. They played wide. Um, but they also played within the active sectors. They got uh, that that significant coordinated push with the armor from 38th and 91st. They were able to react to it. We go even earlier. I know when we were talking on that south side of the chapel, we talked about, hey, look out. 31st, 91st is making, you know, making a break. They're coming in. And then within 30 seconds, the 501st of Bastardos was able to completely enclose that attack and just yep. encapsulate it. And just yeah, take it out. So they 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 squeeze the squeeze. So uh, 30, uh, 38th and ninety first <laughs> brought an anaconda, and then five hundred first and Bastardos brought a brought a brought a boa constrictor. Um, <laughs> terrible. This we're gonna be, we're gonna, this um, is gonna be no. known as the boa constrictor match. <laughs> oh yeah, this is so in and and you know going back to the good, really really hard to beat teams right now. One one hundred fourth WTH. Those guys are utilizing that strategy. Here's what I'll say about 501st and Bastardos. I'm very impressed. One with the progress. Uh, two with the with with the map control. I think that their next step is to basically do what they did, just a little bit faster. And yeah. I know that sounds like you know that's that sounds like it's asking a lot, but all they have to do is do what they did, just a little bit faster. Contr like get that south set up quick. Make sure that garrison's up. Control the complete south on the 91st and 38th side. Defense on Rue is not in the strong point defense on Rue is southwest of the strong point and it's east outside of the entire cap sector that is defense on Rue. if you have sme and Rue, you need need to be in the south if you're two three you have a squad or flop squads whatever you need a garrison red garrison get it up on the south wheat fields i think i believe it was f8 deep down in the south you have to control that otherwise they're set up with the front push you said they got it uh they did have that garrison up for that push 501st you got you got to control that. That's how you clean it out. Periphery defense is on the far southwest. Um, we didn't see that, but I think if they review the footage, they can they can uh, adjust very quickly. So, yeah. And, and let me let me not describe. You know, let's not look over. Oh yeah. That five versus best hours was three players down. This was a not a fifty v fifty. This was well technically a forty nine versus forty nine if the streamers were in there weren't in there. But this was a forty nine versus forty six match. Um, which is a full tank crew, a three-man tank crew that they could have had in here. And yet the 501st and Bastardos were able to do it. Um, credit to their their attacks, how it was a one squad. It was just a little bit of um, their, their hunter killers, if you will, that got in there, created havoc, kind of got that defense thinking they, they were good. Hey, we cleared them out, blah, blah, blah. And then before you know it, they came right back in there. And then that's when the rest of the main force came up, uh, was able yeah. to do go from there. Um, for the 38th and 91st, first off, uh, let's not send out the 91st uh, without uh, saying thank you for setting up this tournament. Uh, I know for Sox, it is not, not easy to do. It's, it's not easy to set up one scrim, let alone have 10 teams in a tournament. 49 people. Yeah, uh, I think this was a perfect thing right after the Greyhound Cup to come into the summer. 
look specifically to get some of these communities to uh, bind together. I think we're seeing the fruit of that labor right now with the 501st and Bastardos. Bastardos taking a lot of actions from this moving forward. But to the 91st, uh, thank you for setting this up. Uh, for the 38th, uh, we've seen some great games from you guys. Sadly, your, your uh, tournament ends here. But I think if I, know, if I saw correctly, they're going to be in the European League of the uh, HOL Premier League, uh, which is being set up by BR1. And I'm sure they're going to take a lot of the lessons learned that we saw today. Moving over there, let's kind of dive into maybe what some of those lessons learned are, uh, Muck. What was maybe one thing from 38th and 91st that you would have liked to see differently? So uh, 38th and 91st, first of all, I got my eye on them. Great job, guys. I, I, you know, if they're, if they're seeing this, um, I think, you know, you guys are, you guys are a tough team. Um, what I would like to see a little bit more is you have to hedge your bets when it comes to strong points, right? If you know that the strong point uh, is going to be in favor of the allies, where are the sectors that you need to be to close them out? Um, once again, and, and I'll beat a dead horse here, clear, got to take control of the South um, defensively and offensively. Um, so if you're hedging your bets, you got the flop squads, have one or two guys, maybe going south, setting up the OPs, making sure you have spawn points available if you are to lose that point. And that's what I mean by hedging your bets. You're saying, okay, if we lose this point, where do we want to be? Mm -hmm. North is important, yes, but south, especially when it's Rue, that's the pinch point. That's the pivot point. South of Rue, or sorry, south of SME, east of Rue is the pivot point. You must control that. If you control that on a 2-3, your advantage is increased tenfold um so uh, the the two things i would like to see is 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 91st and 38th saying where is the where is the key sector that if we're to hedge our bets and we're to um you know lose this point where do we need to be and on defense where are they trying to set up thinking like the opponent thinking like the enemy like it's a game of chess right thinking way ahead um i think if they close that out they've got they've got the coordination they've got the killers they could do well. So yeah, well, and actually leads right into my. I, I think for the 38th and 91st, uh, they did a lot of good things. They showed why they got to the quarterfinals in this tournament. 100%. Um, I think the the area where they missed was filling out. Do we have our back sector secured? If we look at, I mean, the chapel, the main point. That's American bias. Needless to say, it went to 501st and Bastardos pretty easily with those routes right into the strong point there at the chapel. If we look at the yeah. other two points, it was an OP or a red zone garrison that was behind. And let's give credit to the five first by Saros not over committing on the offense. But it was the fact that there was always that uh, OP back there and their defense just wasn't able to sniff it out. And those attack squads was just able to grind, just put in the grind, keep yeah, chipping away. Telling. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's something that they'll have to look at, especially with red zone garrisons that came in update nine, uh, being perfected now in uh, after multiple tournaments since update nine. Yeah. I think that's it. Give credit to both teams realizing the new meta, getting the resource nodes uh, up right away in the uh, warm up period, not wasting any time. Yeah, there. the opener, the opener, man. Exactly. Got to nail that opener. You got to nail yeah. that opener. Both and, teams and on, on that on that attack, real quick. It, one thing, like, like I was saying about five hundred first Bastardos. They've come so far and they're looking great. And when I say about the next level for them is 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 going a little bit quicker with the things that they did is one on the offense for Rue. They get that they get that pressure on the garrison. They did do that. But I'm saying if that thing's green, you need OPs on it. They got it. Yeah. Um, and then and then the next level would be what they still did. But uh, what I what I would like to see, you know, and this is no discredit to them, the great, uh, but a little bit faster is then once you have Rue. Then you're already on that green garrison, pushing them out of the southwest, uh, out, out of their their recap sector. So you did see those things, which is awesome. Love to see it. But their next level is getting that happen happen quicker, and they're going to be very hard to beat if that's well. The and the next level for them it happens immediately next week as they take on a uh, pie and core, who was previously the 104th new name uh, brand new name for them. Uh, that Guys. is going to be that is going to be a tough challenge. Uh, I I'm, I'm going to you know. Much respect to what we just saw, but clearly going to be the underdogs going into that match. Um, with that said, we, we you know when we're calling out, it's clear the five first and best artists had a lot of depth. We weren't necessarily saying the same names all the time. I'll give a shout out before we close here to Blue with that point taken on Rue de Gambo, working away, not just staying uh, into the strong point, working around, getting that garrison taken out. Great work there by Blue. Um, that's my final comment uh, as far as the match go. Uh, Muck, did you have anything to add before we close out of here? 
I have one thing to add. I don't know if this I don't know if this is okay or not, but I'm gonna say it. Uh five oh first Amistados, I think you guys are looking really good. If you guys watch this, um I'm just gonna keep this as light as possible. Remember to review any footage you can, see what this you know, see what's going on and see how you can react. That's I'll leave it at that. So <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that, that's sage advice. That's uh, that's good advice. Yeah. So, congratulations to Five O First and Bastardos. Thank yeah, you great once job, guys. Thank you once again to the Ninety First for hosting the Summer Cup. Uh, definitely want to see it come again uh, next season. But check out the other streamers. I think there's one going on right now. Uh, check out that one. We got another match tomorrow. And check back next week for the semifinals of the Summer Cup. We'll see you next time. Take care. The stream brought to you by my inebriation. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>